In this video, I will be talking about a platform that will allow you to do reproducible data science projects. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the platform that I'm talking about today is called Code Ocean. And in a nutshell, it essentially allows you to perform reproducible data science projects. By reproducible, I mean that you could do this right on the cloud. You don't even need to download anything. You don't even have to run a local version of your model. You could just upload all of your data, all of your model, building code online inside this Code Ocean capsule. And then you could share the link to your capsule that you have published. And then other people could then use your shared capsule for running your calculations or visualize plots that you have created. And so let's have a look at the website here. So we can see here that it supports popular computational tools. Particularly, it supports all of the major languages such as Python, R, Git, MATLAB, Docker, Julia, and also Jupyter. And you will be seeing here, right here, that the three major essential components of a code ocean capsule is comprised of three parts, the code, the data, and the environment. And so I will be showing you in just a moment how a actual capsule will look like. And so there you have it, everything that you need to run your data science model will be shared inside a reproducible capsule. So everything will be on the cloud and then you could share the link and then other people could just access the link and run your simulation without even having to download it from GitHub, installing libraries on their own local computer and maybe get stuck on some installation issues. And so here they could easily access the link, run the simulation, get access to the visualization plots and tables that you have intended for them to see. And so this diagram here explains the general workflow of how a typical compute capsule work. So all of the capsules are shared inside repositories. So you could think of this as kind of like a catalog. And then you will select a capsule of your interest. So you will pull the capsule out. And then you're going to be running the calculations. You might be making some modification to the code of this capsule. And then you could create a derivative capsule out of that, which is built on top of the previous capsule. Okay, and so let's have a look further. So you can see here that it looks pretty much kind of like a IDE, an integrated development environment, whereby you have the code, data, and the environment in the directory listed here on the left-hand panel. And on the middle panel, you will see the code outputs. Okay, and on the right, you will see the version history. Okay, let's have a look further. And so you might notice here that Code Ocean supports companies, academia, and also publishers. So it's apparently free for academia, but for those in industry, you might have to inquire about the price of this. And so here they list some of the benefits of using the code ocean. And so the major benefit here is reproducibility. Another is to be able to share the code in the form of the capsule. So not only the code, the code and the associated data and also the environment from which it will be running on. Okay, and then you could share it. Other people can take the code or capsule and then they could run the simulation, run the calculation, and this will facilitate collaboration. And so the magic of of online collaboration can be supported by Code Ocean. So as mentioned above, benefits includes the reproducibility, the tracking of the model capsules. It will reduce researchers' time, but also those from industry as well, as you could share your algorithm in a reproducible form. Okay, so you see here that it supports R, Python, and Julia, and Matplotlib, and also MATLAB. So why don't we have a look inside the Code Ocean? So let's sign in. So for the first time, you will have to sign up to Code Ocean, and it's free to sign up. So go ahead and do that. And then here you can see the data assets. So it's essentially data sets that you could have access to and analyze or play around with. So you can see here that there's the Iris data sets, and let's explore. So here are the capsules. And so what I did was I searched for QSAR because that's the field of my research. It is the field whereby you could apply machine learning to make sense of biological and chemical data. So I have a couple of QSAR tutorials on the channel. And so I'll provide the links in the video description. And so the first thing that you see here upon entering the capsule, this is a capsule, you will see the metadata. And the metadata will describe the information about this particular capsule. So the name of this. So you can see here that it's part of a manuscript with this name. And here are the authors and the abstract or summary of this project. 
And if you use this work, if you use this capsule, you could cite this by including this in your technical reports, in your research publication, or also your website if you make use of this. So the middle panel here will be where the code output will be displayed. So here you see the tabs of the different code files. This is the Jupyter Notebook. Okay. And so on the left-hand panel, you see that this file, CRNN results, the Jupyter Notebook, is right inside the code folder. So here you can see that there are four major parts here. You have the metadata that contains the information about this capsule, which is right inside the metadata.yml file. You have the environment, and this will contain the Docker file with instructions for it to set up a proper environment from which your code and data will run from. And then you have the code. So it could be your Jupyter Notebook, your Python code file, your R code file, Julia, MATLAB, etc. And then you have the data. The data will reside in this folder. Okay, so we can see here that there's Chemble 25 training and testing model, and they have saved it in the form of a H5 file format. All right, and so why don't we give this a try? Let's run this notebook. Let's click on Edit Capsule. So you can see down below that we have duplicated this capsule, and a copy is saved in my dashboard. Let's hit on the Reproducible Run. Please make sure result files are saved in results. Okay, it is running. All right, and so it's building, so it's running the environment. And you can see here that you could launch other workstations as well. You could have a Jupyter Lab, you have, have a R Studio, you could have Jupyter Notebook in the command line, or also a Shiny application as well, right from R. So if you haven't yet tried Code Ocean, you could check it out. And I'll provide you the links to this in the video description. So this might take a while. So we can see here that there are some so pre-built models and other helper files as well. Okay, and we have the information on the license. And this is the file that is created automatically upon running this capsule. So in the meantime, let's have a look at another capsule. So the other capsule is a bioinformatic capsule. So it's actually found on the first page. It is this one. So I just clicked on it. And you see here again that it contains the same components that I have mentioned earlier. You have the metadata, you have the environment, which is the Docker file, and then you have the code, and then you have the data. Let's have a look at this Jupyter Notebook. Let's also run this. Okay, so it's still building. Why don't I find a smaller example? An example that will run much quicker. So you can see here that these are the capsules that we have initiated and it has created a copy in my own dashboard. So let me search for Iris. Maybe they have an Iris data set here. Okay, so this looks quite simple enough. So we see here there's the environment, the code, and the data. Okay, so apparently they haven't saved the data in here. And let's see what it has here in the main file. Okay, so for performing classification with this fuzzy R library. Let's have a look at these files. Okay, so I see. So there's no data here because they're generating artificial data sets. All right, so let's run it. Should not take a long time to run. Let's try it out running code. Okay, so it ran much quicker. Okay, so here, the outputs are listed here. Okay, so depending on the capsule that we're running, some might be just displaying the output in the command line. Some might be showing a visualization plot. Okay, so, so it worked. So you can see that the capsule ran successfully. Okay, the first one is still running. All right, so a little progress. See the other one. Okay, so apparently it's converting the file. Okay. Let's see if we could find another example. Okay, even they have a Rubik's Cube solver. Let's give this a try. Proceed. Click on the reproducible run. Right, so earlier on in the video, you saw that I clicked on the edit capsule. So that is when you want to edit the files in here. And if you clicked on it, it will create a copy in your dashboard. Otherwise, if you just run it, it will be also in the dashboard, but it will not create a copy, if that makes sense. 
let me show you. You see that if we click on edit, it creates this copy. So you see they have the copy off in front. Otherwise, it's just us running this particular capsule. Okay. All right. So we can see that it's still running. Okay. So at a glance, it is running on the cloud. So apparently it's still running. Okay, so here you can see that it's running and it's using GPUs for the calculation. And so as this might take a while, I'll just leave this up to you guys to try it out. And let me know in the comments which capsule is most interesting for you. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.